<laughs> okay, right, it's ludicrously early in the morning. I'm on the day before half term. I can't actually believe I'm doing this at this time in the morning. So this is the results table for the um, potato osmosis experiment. So these are my raw results where I've just jotted down the molarity, start, finish weight and uh, the difference. Now obviously I'm going to need to do a percentage difference in mass because each one of these has different starting masses. So no matter how carefully I have cut them, my scalpel and my little millimetre ruler just not quite accurate enough. Could be that the potatoes are different densities, who knows. But because they've all got different starting masses, um, then obviously that you so this one looks like you know oh you know they've put on the same mass but this one's come from a much further point away than this one has so a percentage difference so I'm going to need and um, planning my results table now five columns so um, my page is 18 centimeters wide I am pretty much going to do three centimeter columns. And I don't know why you wouldn't use a ruler for this. I just, why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you think, hmm, a ruler, that's a good idea. Um, and I'm going to take my line all the way down. And then, sorry to be a bit sort of, you know, OCD and retentive about this. But I need to know how much room my title is going to take. I've probably messed up the... Um, I've moved, the, I've moved the paper, which was carefully positioned by Dr. Savile. Let me just, ooh. oh no, we're okay, we're good at an angle. <coughs> it means I can actually write. So actually my first title is my independent variable, so this is what I altered. And it, um, although on my raw results I've jotted down molarity, it's actually the concentration, when I think about it, concentration of the bathing solution of the potato. So you need to actually say exactly what this is. Um, and I could have put, you know, a concentration of sucrose in the bathing solution for the potato. And that is in the unit's moles. And then I've got my um, initial mass. And again, it's of a potato. Why not say that? Because uh, I can't spell it, that's why. Um, and that's in grams, so it is really early in the morning. And this is the final mass of the potato in each solution. And again, that's in grams. And then I want to know the um, final minus initial mass in grams, which will give me the difference and then the percentage change in mass of the potato. So now I know where, you know, how long my tail is going to be because I've got um, values of 0, 0 0.2. Notice how I've written the 0. I haven't just put 0 because it's to one decimal place. I've got 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8 and 1. And again, I need to make that 1.0. And I can now tidy up my results table and put all my lines in. Uh, my pencil could be a bit sharper. No mind. I'm going to go down to. Do you know what? I'm going to turn it around that way. I'm really hoping this is still in the view of the camera. Hey, you're probably all laughing and thinking, oh gosh, miss, really? Is that what you're expecting us to do? Use a ruler? This is not me being particularly pedantic 
this is just taking a bit of pride in your work, being a bit precise, being a bit scientific. You know, let's aim for that. I'm sick of seeing scrawl in people's books. Okay, I'm just going to check that we're... Ah, oh, yeah, we're all good. <coughs> so, uh, starting mass, 1.74, 1.91, 1.79, 1.81. One point nine five, one point nine eight, final mass one point nine nine, one point nine seven, one point five six, one point two six, one point three two, one point two nine. Excellent. Do you know I'm sure I brought a cup of coffee in here? Anyway. Let's do the uh, final minus the initial. Now, the way I, because I'm doing it this way, because um, if my mass goes up, I want a positive value, and if my mass goes down, I want a negative value, so that's why I'm doing it that way round. Um, take away 0.75. So that's my difference, and I want to know the percentage of what it's come from, which is the initial mass. So I'm now going to, I don't know whether you can see this now, divide by 1.74 equals, and I won't be lazy this time, normally I just read it from there. You want a percentage times 100, so 14.36. I'm going to leave it at 14 because I'm thinking when I'm doing my graph, um, I'm going to make it, I'll just do it to one decimal place. On my graph I may well round it down further depending on what my scale's like. So 1.97 take away 1.91 equals, divided by what it came from, times 100. So that's um, 3.1, oh, I should have filled that in. 1.06 So this is now giving me a minus number because the mass has dropped divided by 0.79 That's going to be minus 12 Eight. It's great watching somebody calculate, isn't it? Do you know what? My life's too short. I can multiply by a hundred in my head. I don't clever like that. Should be done with uh, oh, that. written the first number down, that would have been a lot of that clever easy. One point two nine. Last one. Oh, perfect. So that's my lovely perfect trend on the results table. And now I need to draw a graph. So graphs are always a bit of an issue. I don't know why. Effectively, um, I need a scale that goes from kind of minus 35 to plus 15. So just on my raw results, I'm thinking minus 35 all the way up to plus 15 uh, so I'm going to plan to do five, do it in 5 so if I put minus 35 there that would be minus 30, minus 25, minus 20 
minus 15, minus 10, minus 5, 0, 5, 10, 15. That works as a scale. So, perfect. Um, and I've only got, I've got 0, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0.8 and 1. So I can start my graph sort of 2 in. So if I start minus 35 there, minus 35, 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5, 0, 5, 10, 15, perfect. So my graph's nice and central now. So, whoops. Actually, can you see that? Oh, just about. I'm going to move that out of the way. I'll move this in. Uh -huh. <coughs> so just, you know, plan your scale before you start. Minus 35. Minus... So I'm only going to be able to plot the nearest number, so I'm going to round those again. Um, minus 25. Minus 20. Minus 15. Minus 10, minus 5, 0, 5, 10, 15. What does that axis represent? That represents the percentage change in mass of potato. And it's not the mean because I've only done it once. Then I'm going to put my x-axis in, and that goes 0, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, 1. And I'm not going to do the writing on that yet, because I don't know, obviously this is going from plus values to minus values, in a sort of pretty much a trend, but I don't know where that is going to cross the x-axis and I don't want my words to get in the way of my line. So I'm going to sharpen my pencil because that's not particularly sharp. Because the point of a graph is to be nice and accurate so that's a sharp pencil. That would really hurt if you stabbed yourself in the eye with that or even in the finger. So my first value is 14.4 um, and I could plot to point the nearest point 0.5, but I'm just going to do it to the nearest whole number. So 14 will be there. And I've got um, a point 0.2, it'll be 3. And 4, 3. And I've got minus 12.8, I'm going to call that minus 13. All right, oh, cameraman's back. This is adjusting. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I've been messing up, been messing about with papers being all over the place. What can I say? <laughs> I apologise profusely. Um, then I've got minus 27.6, which I'm going to call minus 28. 29, 28. And then I've got minus 32.3, which I am going to call 32, 31, 32. <coughs> and then I've got finally minus 34.9 I'm going to, I'm going to handily call that 35 filling the scale up beautifully now that kind of looks like it's doing that and it could well be there might be a limit to how much mass a potato can use uh, I could potentially draw a line of best fit but my personal preference is to always join dot to dot because I know I'm never going to be wrong with that Unless there's a really clear curve, I'd always just err on the safe side. So again, my technique for sort of dot to dotting is to make sure that my line goes through the centre of the point. Is to put my pencil on one point, bring my ruler to it, bring my ruler to that, check that again, and then join. This table's a bit blue. And So remember that you know if you join point to point, it has to kind of be right into the centre of the point. 
it's really obvious when it doesn't go through the center like this one Ooh. that one is not as slidey as it could be so now I can put my x-axis in because I know where my line crosses so this is the concentration of the bathing solution makes me think of old-fashioned Victorian swimsuits that bathing solution potato and that's in moles okay so lovely so, so just to, let's just talk a bit about graph interpretation oh I need some numbers on this don't I so I've got point two point four that one's zero uh, should have thought about this earlier point six point eight that's not really tidy is it should have put the numbers on first there's a lesson learnt. <coughs> so, when we come to graph interpretation, you're going to need to explain for your analysis why the potato mass increased. So you need to be talking about these are the very low concentrations, these have higher water potential, the solution has a higher water potential than the potato, the water moves in and the mass increases. The exact opposite for these concentrations, so this is where the solution is more concentrated and has a lower water potential than the potato and the water is leaving the potato and uh, you kind of missed it yesterday when I did all the rest of the results uh, some of those potatoes were a bit grim to touch they were a bit floppy so um, we've then got this x-intercept here uh, let me work it out it's 0.24 and that's where there is no change in mass. Now, if there's no change in mass, I'm just going to doodle on my graph. Don't you doodle on your graphs, unless you're in an exam. And that's where the water's going in and out equally. So that, that 0.24 molar, that's where we've got equal going in and out. And if you remember, in your practical, then you had to identify your molarity and then read off a water potential so what we're saying here is that where there's no change in mass, water's moving in and out equally because the concentration of the solution outside is the same as the concentration of the tissue overall and therefore we can work out the water potential. So the water potentials are equal inside and outside and we can convert um, that number to uh, kilopascals. And our uh, jobs are good, and then we know the water potential of our potato, given all the limitations of the experiment. Anyway, we'll talk about limitations another time.